snap, snap, <laughs> snap, fake crypto apps. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant, everybody watching us live hello, over hello. there on Twitch. We were just chatting up, talking about the wonderful, wonderful benefits of Wayland and how it's the future and how mm -hmm. I still love X11. <laughs> yes. I don't but like I, I want Wayland to succeed. I, I, I'm not going to pick Absolutely. a side on that. I'm like, whatever, <laughs> yeah. whatever, whatever works best. That's what I end up using. I'm that horrible person. But <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I, I, I don't do teams on that, man. I'm like, which one works best? All right, I'll be using that one. Oh, the other thing works best now. I'll be using that now. Such mm -hmm. a weird way of thinking, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll just be happy, whatever. You know, whatever works with uh, Window Maker, I'm happy with. <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> whatever works for you. Um, yeah, that's that's something I was touching on. You know, I, I was glad I finally got to the age and I got over the hump of um, hearing what other people use. As long as it works for you, and as long as you're happy with it, cool, mm -hmm. awesome. We can be friends. You can come over. We can play Sonic the Hedgehog. It'll be a great evening. Um, yeah, getting wound up by stuff like that. That's, that's out of my system. It's been out of my system for a long time. It makes yeah. you a happier person. But Jill, speaking of happier people, <laughs> yay! you finally got a vintage <laughs> GPU. Oh, no, not vintage, Ben. So uh, I got an Intel Arc GPU for my wedding anniversary last weekend. And it's right here. Sweet. <laughs> I'm so happy. It is the ASRock Phantom Gaming overclocked version it's the a70 a770 with 16 gigabytes of ram thank you steve husband see i don't i don't like jewelry and flowers for my anniversary i like computer parts i'm just waiting for you to drop it <laughs> no i'm being very careful <laughs> no it's a sweet sweet card here <laughs> sweet card have you plugged it in yet no, I just literally like, got it. Hundred percent. No, I literally got it late last night, so I haven't had time to to touch it. <laughs> so uh, today, after the show, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> and we'll Playing never around. see Jill again. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you got it. Um, congratulations. Yes. <laughs> you guys can still put up with each other. That's awesome. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> we had a great weekend, actually, Vin. So what happened is. I went to Micro Center because this was there. There was a good sale at Micro Center. It was like a twenty or thirty dollars, twenty five dollars off from the Amazon sale price, and uh, I wanted to get it there. But they had sold out by the time we got there. So literally, right after we left Micro Center, I'm like, ah, I just bought it on Amazon. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. I went to Newegg because Newegg was ten dollars cheaper. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to Newegg and got it. So. It came out in total about uh, $330, which is very good because a lot of the cards, uh, usually $350 to $400 is average. Mm -hmm. So I got a good sell on it. So yeah. I'm playing around with one. I'm glad you got the card. I hope you look forward to playing with it. Hope it does everything. Yeah. Hope it doesn't explode. It doesn't uh, break out of your computer, knock down your back door, and run screeching into the night. Yeah. <laughs> so what am I doing? Oh, I think we pretty much got this Raspberry Pi thing hammered out. So I've collected the data points on what it actually looks like under load. And um, I can continue on with a nice little guide that are just, just going to confuse people. Mm -hmm. I've already realized where I'm at with that. But I, I look forward to making it. So if you've been interested in like, ah, oh, man, I, I don't care. Like if you just want a weekend project, that's fun to do. To have your own private little WebRTC server. We were talking in the pre-show. Apparently people expect a lot more from video conferencing these days than i do <laughs> like what what do i expect uh what we're doing right now like hi i can hear and see jill awesome yeah. we're good to go it we're sounds happy. good it looks good it's <laughs> like no 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 this, this, this thing doesn't balance your checkbook for you I'm like <laughs> no my like, oh, ball it's useless um that's really all i expect from jitsi is a basic web art and that's what i'm going to be showing you how to get nice. that set up securely and lock it down to where randos just can't jump in your chats or anything to that effect. So looking forward to that. Now, speaking of security, dun, 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 let's talk about Snapdraft. Oh man, 
Yeah. Snap, snap, <laughs> snap. Fake crypto apps. That's my mad rhyme. Um, apparently, last week, <laughs> there were some fake apps, which were thieving your funds. Um, and they must be removed immediately, according to Not Needed. And this was posted on the uh, canonical snapcraft.io forums. And I, I was following this trail. So three apps. Um, Trenzer or Treaser Wallet, Electrum Wallet, and uh, Ledger One. Mm -hmm. It continues. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody else had reported, and there's a phishing app on the Snap Store. Is my computer compromised? And um, apparently, this one, this one was disguised as the official app for Ledger. Yeah, that that's scary because that's a crypto app. <laughs> right, and it doesn't matter what yeah. your thoughts are on crypto. This could happen to any other app. Um, yeah. Now, what 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 happened here was later on, there was a temporary suspension of automatic snap registration following the security incident, and this is what got me digging around. And like, wow, we're just not. And apparently, the security incident was. Something that kind of surprised me. Um, no, they did say that all the apps that they know of have been removed and the automatic registration for snaps have been suspended for the time being. Now, I was kind of taken back. I don't keep super like on top of uh, containerized uh, desktop stuff like flat packs and snaps because I'm not a huge fan of them. But I got to think, like, it, it just in my little tiny humble opinion like manual reviews could like really be mand mandatory for like anything that is submitted that is coming from like third parties right like mm -hmm. i mean if you go to download the spotify do you, do you really want and here, here's my fine point on that anything that it's touching account information you know yeah like do, do you want frank's spotify orama snap package or the other 16 spotify or pick your application here coming from whoever are you going to trust that person with to handle your data securely or are you going to trust them to keep the app updated and to maintain the security of the snap like why isn't there manual reviews for stuff like that like i i maybe maybe this is a learning learning thing mm -hmm. but maybe I, I kind of assumed like checks and stuff like this was built into the snap store because that unlike flat pack you go to yeah. one place to get your snaps you know and that is like one of the advantage that closed source back in you know that canonical has something like this can still take place i was kind of surprised joe yeah me too this is this is a big security breach <laughs> but hopefully the team has learned from this and i think there does need to be a system of review put in place for each app submitted. So I don't think obviously, hopefully that will change because <laughs> it's such a brilliant system, especially for server side. Server um, side stuff kind of makes yeah. sense for like desktop applications because the type of person, because Canonical does a, there's an effort from Canonical to steer the person into installing snaps and to going to the snap store and using that. Yeah. You can't argue that with me. That's it. So there needs to be some work on that end to ensure that every single thing in that Snap Store has been vetted to some extent. Because mm -hmm. this isn't the Google Play Store. Like, you got the resources to check these things out manually. It's not like the tsunami of applications or limit the applications. Again, I'm going to go back. Like, if there's a Discord Snap, it should, there should be one, and it should be from Discord. If Discord doesn't want to make one, don't have one. Yeah. Now, how is this different than, oh, well, I can just go to a GitHub from this person's project. I can download their project and I can install it. That's fine. That's great. That There's a completely different type of person who's going to do at least, mm -hmm. hopefully, some due diligence in that chain before they get to the GitHub page and download it and install it versus the person who sees the screen pop up and says, here's the store. Click on thing and install it. Again, just my opinion. Something you might mm -hmm. want to think um, about. Mm -hmm. Jill, have you ever owned a laptop? Yes, I certainly have. And this 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 tool will really come in handly, handy. Handily? <laughs> handily. <laughs> come in handy. <laughs> this is Auto CPU Freak or Auto CPU Frequency. 
It's an awesome open source command line utility based on Python that lets you, you know, automatically optimize CPU speed and battery power. The tool actually monitors your CPU and prints metrics on the terminal, such as the CPU usage, frequency, and temperature of each CPU core, as well as monitors the state of your battery, your system load, and lets you do turbo boost management. But what is really cool is Auto CPU Freak version 2.0 is out, which now has a really useful GUI GTK application as well as the command line interface. So now you can use either one. And uh, you know, when this this uh application came out in 2020, the first thing I did is put it on all my Linux-based app laptops, all my all my distros. We had talked about it here on LWW back when it came out. And um uh, we were talking about how well it runs on the laptops. And in fact, I had it installed on one of my Archbase laptops I used and literally, literally got like an hour's extra worth of battery life on that laptop because of auto CPU freak. <laughs> so I highly recommend it. It's really, really cool. And uh, another cool feature is that you can run auto CPU freak in a monitor mode or in a live mode that is temporary until you reboot the computer. So got a lot of nice options there. And they've done a lot of bug fixes with version two. And uh, you can check it out on the GitLab, uh, GitHub on how to install it and everything. So mm -hmm. like I said, you probably got a laptop laying around. Even I have laptops. I don't like laptops, but you know, I got them. They're sitting mm -hmm. around the house. But if you're using one, especially if it's your uh, daily driver, you need to know about this program. This isn't just like, hey, this little thing that this guy made, maybe you should check. No, this is something you should be running. This is something, any device that you got that's got a power brick in it somewhere, it's got some lithium ion floating around in it, I want you to go check mm -hmm. this out. Now, you're probably thinking, well, I already have a governor. You know, I got CPU frequency set up. I, have, I can choose yeah. between on-demand power save and performance i'm good to go Vin. you need to shut up and i'm like nay 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 you know instead mm -hmm. of having those static governors what this is doing is it's taking a couple of things into consideration before it's going to cut everything down to one or cut it all the way back up to 11. you know yeah. it's thinking hey man is this laptop plugged in all right cool are, are we on um using that battery maybe i don't want to wind it up too much What's the CPU temp? What's the overall system load? <laughs> and it puts all that together. Then it determines what's going to be the optimal performance that laptop, your laptop, or your friend's laptop should be running at to get the maximum performance versus your battery life. And I think that's a pretty big thing to have mm -hmm. installed. And better battery life, just overall, better performance overall. And, you know, it's got a GUI. It's 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 got a GUI, kinda. No. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it it looks like the the CLI <laughs> or the CLI. <laughs> it, it, it's but a it's GUI nice. in the sense that there's not one but three radio radio buttons to click. Yeah, so there a we, hamburger. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, and uh, DS and Joe, DS and G Joe in chat was asking if I ran it on a desktop. And I actually haven't run auto CPU freak on a desktop, but I have run CPU freak on a desktop to adjust the, the governors on my processor. Do you have your desktop plugged into UPS? If the answer <laughs> is no, then don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> so go check this out. All that's going to be in my, um, well, in our show notes. It's going to be on the web zone, LinuxTeamCast.com. Go check it out after the fact. Or just. Yeah. Use it on your laptops. <laughs> go, go bing it. Go duck it. Yeah. Duck, duck, go, man. You know, Google with a verb thing, man. Google got in early enough to where it became a verb. It's an action verb. You know, like, hey, yes. you're going to Google something and everything. <laughs> which, you know, it, it's generic. It's like Kleenex, isn't it? You're like, yeah. Go Google it. That means search, but there's always the one person that comes out of the wall. Duck, I, duck, go it. Duck, duck, go it. And I, <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, come on. There's a reason nobody invites you to parties, my man. Um. <laughs> anyway. 
<laughs> One thing parties needs DJs and something you can DJ with, you can do live audio with, is a digital audio workstation. And we talked about one last week. That was PreSonus's Studio One releasing a Linux beta just out of nowhere. There's just dropped it on the desk. I'm like, what is going on here? Now, for me, this is big news because PreSonus makes some awesome digital audio uh, workstations, applications, tools, and plugins. They get a bunch of different versions of this. Not necessarily interested in the application so much as to what they said during the release of like, we might also be working on official Linux drivers for our Thunderbolt uh, audio interfaces. And like, that would be neat. Anyway, mm -hmm. told you about it last week, played around with it, got it installed. I'm back to tell you what the experience was like. And limited is a good word to wrap this up uh, because that's what this Linux beta is. Very limited. The install. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I followed the directions. Now, if you're unfamiliar with using commercial software on Linux, do as you're told, and you will have a good time. The, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've had people come back constantly on the um, DaVinci Resolve AMD, how to get that up and running uh, with the official binary drivers, and they're like, well, this doesn't work on Pop! OS. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Um, you need this version of Ubuntu or this version of RHEL. They're like, but I have Papa West. I'm like, that's a cool story. Do you got anything else you want to share? I like the color blue. Um, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, uh, really straightforward. I followed those directions. Now I installed the correct version of Ubuntu, which was something about lobsters or something like that. I forget. Um, space lobsters or something, whatever version that is. <laughs> I got Waylon installed and I got Jack installed. I also ended up using KDE because they were pretty clear about like, make sure you have Jack up and running. Yeah, so you used Ubuntu Studio? No, I used Ubuntu. No, see, Jill, like, why doesn't it work with my Ubuntu Studio? Like, because <laughs> it told you to install Lunar Lobster, not Lunar Ubuntu Lobster, Studio. Lunar Lobster, yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you what it did. Um, I, step one, rip out pipe wire. You rip out pipe wire, Gnome's like, I'm out too. I'm like, I, I, I'm kind of cool with that. I'll just use KDE. So that's why we're doing this on KDE. Mm -hmm. Installed Jack. Uh, I went through all my system setup stuff and configured the uh, system for real-time audio. Still going to do a guide on how to do that because it's only like 15-minute process. It also not only works with Jack, I found out that it works with Balsa. Yeah, I remember you were surprised by that, and I was too because it said specifically in, in the uh, information about it when it came out that it, it said Jack. Mm -hmm. Only. It didn't say also. Right. And <laughs> I was surprised, and I tested it out with the control surface. I have an IO Station 24C that uh, Guy Linux picked up off of our wish list, and I did a video on that a couple of months ago. Now, uh, it's a little bit crashy. I found a way to reliably crash it by importing one plus gigabyte uh, WAV files, 32-bit uh, float. Had problems with that. The only GUIs that you have for plugins, let me see... Or the bundled PreSonus plugins. Everything else, uh, you either get a blank screen or you get some generic dials. PreSonus is, uh, this is Wayland only. So they've updated their API for plugin developers to go back and change their plugin to make it work with this, which I want to be part of whatever fever dream that PreSonus is on because ain't, that ain't never going to happen. But uh, hey, you can use the built in plugin GUIs, they exist. And uh, like I said, that control surface works but only just and audio comes out and that's about where they said this was going to be i did a little bit of a write-up for it uh hey how do you find out whether or not you're running Wayland? that's how you do it what sound servers you need how to download it how to get it installed it comes in the form of a deb how to do your setup and um, get your audio device control surfaces bundled plugins and yeah just that nice blank screen when you uh try to get the third parties but to PreSonus's credit right out of the gate. They're like, this is basically a tech demo. We're just, we're just testing the waters. We're going to see how this works. And uh, pretty much what they delivered. Still excited to mm. see what uh, comes down the pipe wire from PreSonus, Yay. be it uh, continuations of this DAW, more commercial DAWs on Linux. I don't have a problem with it. You know, we have Reaper, we have Bitvig. Now, technically, we have PreSonus. PreSonus is not a cheap uh, application. Oh, Harrison Mixbus, too. I always forget about it. Harrison Mixbus mm. is a door with a skeuomorphic body kit. Like, clicked onto it. Just use a door. Trust me on this. Um, but in PreSonus, is not a cheap doll either. It's like three, 400 bucks. About the same price as Bitvig, but they have uh, personal editions, which are a lot cheaper. So, 
Good news. Maybe we'll get some Linux drivers at the end of the day. But mm -hmm. the reason we've been plowing through this episode so quickly is because we got a big chunky thing to talk about in our <laughs> yes. slice of pie segment. Is something happened uh, between last week and this, John. You know? Oh, something really big. So some very exciting news in the Raspberry Pi ecosystem. The very much anticipated Raspberry Pi 5 was just announced last Thursday, the day after LWW. And it was announced Thursday by Eben Upton, the CEO of Raspberry Pi Limited. You can pre-order a Raspberry Pi 5 right now for the release at the end of this month, of, which is October. And the last time we actually saw a new release of the Raspberry Pi was the Raspberry Pi 4 back in June of 2019, which has sold 14 million units to date. And then, as Ven and I have been talking about here on LWW, so it has the Raspberry Pi 5 has some awesome specs. It is actually two to three times faster with a 2.4 gigahertz quad core, 64 bit ARM Cortex A76 CPU, and it's got faster graphics performance with the Video Core 7 GPU. And you know, there's two options of of models of RAM uh, for the Pi. There's a four gig one you can buy or an eight gigabyte model, but there are actually two two other features which. I am extremely excited about, and this one is simple. The Raspberry Pi 5 has a dedicated power button now. Yes, you can turn it on and off. <laughs> I'm so happy to, to see that. And it uses silicon designed in-house by the Raspberry Pi, Pi company, which is a first. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the hardware shor shortages they were dealing with. So they said, okay, let's make some of the stuff in-house. <laughs> and that is tradition. We got our standard Raspberry Pi case, but if you look closely, you know, it's that red and white case you get. And you're like, you think mm -hmm. it's going to be, you know, those things are basically made of um, Nintendium, too. Very difficult yeah. to break. Um, mm -hmm. It has a fan on it. It does. Yes. It's got a fan in it. It's got a fan inside it. It's something that goes burr when you plug it in because that Broadcom. Now, <laughs> let's be fair. It's not quite as fast as the latest Rock Chip 3588. But like that rock chip, it needs active cooling. Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh yeah. man. But if you don't want to do the case thing, you can get one of these heat sinks. Look at yeah, that. Really nice. Sweet. I mean, that's really <laughs> dope. All of the fins are in the wrong direction, but still pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it needs to be flipped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not wrong. I, I want to under I, I want to know what to because that wasn't intentional. Maybe that was a cost-saving thing where it didn't need to be machined a certain way. But, oh. um, yeah, you got to have the active cooling on it, which, which is like, this is the first Pi. Now, I have active cooling on my Pi 4 because, you know, the, yes, you can run a Raspberry Pi if you're just doing basic load stuff, like quick loads, like, hey, I'm going to open a browser real quick. But if you're hammering on it, you definitely need that, or it's going to thermal throttle. These are just basically going to do it out of the box, like within 30 seconds. Now, another thing to get excited about with a Raspberry Pi 5, it's got a PCI Express connector, not mm -hmm. a slot, a ribbon a connector. A real connector, yeah. <laughs> a ribbon connector that you're going to need a hat for if you want to get some of that PCI Express goodness, be it in the form of like a Pi 1 slot or an NVMe drive. It, yeah. It's got to wait for it. There's prototype boards out there. We don't have an official product announcement for that particular hat, but it is coming. And um, I'm just going to hold off until that ecosystem. I was at Chicago Electrical last week. Like, you know what? I'm just going to get one because they are cheap. You know, yeah. four gig model. Mm -hmm. And even the eight gig model is only like $5 more than the original price of the Raspberry Pi 4, which is good on you, everyone yes. uh, at Raspberry Pi, keeping the price as long as you keep the stock up right now. And I think stock's going to be reasonably, I was talking about this um, on Linux Gamecast, go back and if you want a more extended gaming focused version of what you can do with the raspberry pi 4 go watch last week's show but every place that i felt that had pre-orders open were very strict and chicago electric was really good with like you know what you can order one if you try to order two we're still going to charge you shipping for the second one but we're not going to send it to you so mm. i i think raspberry pi was very clear with everybody that they've 
will supply pre-order stock to like don't mess us up okay yeah like you know like don't don't pretend no wink like oh we won't sell to scalpers wink you know and like and they just feel like you do this we're gonna burn you <laughs> so hopefully we'll get good stock and raspberry pi 4s are kind of price normalized you can get a raspberry pi 40 gig for like 75 78 bucks right yeah. now even on amazon which is like the pinnacle high price you yes. expect to see anywhere <laughs> so, good times <laughs> It's so nice. They are not two hundred and twenty dollars anymore. Right, <laughs> right. And I mean, this guy's got a real fan header on it. It's got the option for a real time clock. Yeah, it's got a dual four K sixty sixty four K sixty HDMI display play outputs. So mm -hmm. that's pretty sweet. <laughs> and it should be able to actually push that too. Yeah, it has enough grunt. Moral of the story is, uh, I'm probably going to get an orange pi 5 oh okay <laughs> it's just cooler and it's faster <laughs> it's just cooler and faster more ram <laughs> well that was kind of curious though we didn't uh, do you think maybe we cuz i think we were all expecting like larger ram options something different than 4 and 8 because we've seen yeah, 16 and 32 have 16. been so prevalent the past 2 years right mm -hmm. I know, and I was kind of expecting that too, but I have a feeling we're going to get another one, another iteration very soon with 16. I wouldn't say <laughs> soon, but I'd probably <laughs> say maybe another mm -hmm. year. We might see a refresh, but... Yeah. What do you need 16 gigs for? <laughs> yeah, I need a Raspberry Pi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, good, good on Raspberry Pi for getting this out. Yay! We, we were... You know, me and Ven were talking about it the last year. You know, we really need to see a Raspberry Pi 4, especially in 2023. And, and we got it. We got it <laughs> unexpectedly, too. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> I hope it's uh, not a case of too little, too late. Mm -hmm. We'll see. That's going to do it for this week's weekly Daily Wednesday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've done our time. Yes. We'll see you next week. But before we go, let's roll some credits. Real Yay. quick, I want to thank Zaberfang for one of our latest patrons. And I also want to thank Mir and uh, George VPN, which is the latest, <laughs> latest uh, sponsor yes. for this episode. And uh, Gametron <laughs> for Twitch yeah. resubs. Those Bezos box. We appreciate them. And Blasmia pledged $1. Yay. Thank you, Blasmia. <laughs> and boy, we have lots of sea monsters, ex executive producers, uh, lots of death notes. Benjamin, Doom 2, Wad, Gamatron, and Fox Dog, Jalad, Piper, Aromatic Dev. Got lots of chairlings as well. Mr. Alert, Mir, <laughs> Monica, Mark, Yako. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our fine upstanding cannibals picking up stuff off the wish of zone. Carl Mike, Arthur, and Linux Nuru, Aldeus, Noctilus, John, Eshep, Gamatron, you know what, DSN, Joe, Aromatic Dev, and of course, Cat Joe Ride. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going <laughs> to do it for all. episode 395. We'll see you again next week. And let us know if you get a Raspberry Pi. Leave a comment. <laughs> I want to know what your plans are. Are you going to make a desktop? Are you going to make a server? Or are you going to make an autonomous killing machine? <laughs> Till next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Love you all.